fly breaks from time to time. The flies are annoying, so I'm just walking away, looking away. Let her lick and chew a little bit, because I'm respecting her that she's being agitated by a fly. She's not going to learn anything or want to learn anything while she's being bugged by bugs. So, and we will get to the point soon where she'll be under fly spray, and that'll help. But again, we've got to get her comfortable in her own skin, comfortable in the bridle, or why do I keep saying bridle? Comfortable in her halter, comfortable with her lead rope. So, again, and this is what it's taking with her. I could force this, but I'd end up with a horse not in this pen, not in her paddock. If I'm lucky, she'd just be in the next one. Or she could be halfway to Utah. So, we're going at her pace. Now I've got an issue. directly in front of her, which often is not the best place to be with a horse. You want to be a little to the left, a little to the right. But while I'm rubbing her like this, she has a large out off her left side that she can take at any time because I want to be working in both eyes. I don't want her dominant right eye to be the only one that's seeing any work. I don't want to be 100% in that fearful left eye. Because there is some connection between the left brain and the right brain of a horse. And I want to take advantage of everything that's good in her right eye. And hopefully that 10 or 20% is going to transfer over to her left side. And we'll get there. Feeling something there between her ears, behind her ears, on her neck area, where that halter is going to rest, on her pole. And oh, so important. So we're working with something that feels good on her head, with something that's just a little bit different on her pole. You got to mix it in with a bag. And maybe what's perceived bad ends up. Good. Because a good mix with a little bit of bad, as long as there's more good, then all of a sudden that bad may start feeling good because, oh, there's itches and scratches involved with that. Oh, that feels good. Yes, it does. Good girl. I'm no expert on anything as far as touch, pressure points, any of that. I know where a few of them are. I'm just reading Shoshone. She's telling me what's feeling good, what's acceptable, what she likes. And we just go with that. With every different, every other for that. Each and every horse is going to have their own sweet spot. Every horse is going to have spots that concern them. So we accentuate the sweet spots while helping them work through those spots that have them concerned. We just don't focus solely on, oh, this 
a spot that doesn't feel good, I'm just going to hit that spot a hundred times. I mean, that's annoying as hell. You've got to find that feel-good spot. Okay, you can continue working while at the same time you're working those spots that are concerning. There's times you want to be completely quiet with your horse. There's other times you want to be talking to your horse or about your horse. So you get used to your voice. Because with a human, truly, the two things that are, well, there's three things. Our scent, our touch, and our voice the three things that a horse is really going to pick up on. And then they're going to pick up on your heart and whether you got your life together or not. Once they know that you care, they're going to start caring. And then it becomes mutually beneficial that she'll be helping me probably more than I ever can help her. Is that a little bit of zen horsemanship? I don't know. It just works. It doesn't work overnight. It isn't an instant. This is brick by brick, isn't it? Brick by brick. Very slowly. And I have an audience over here. Tejote's watching. Yeah, we went through this too, didn't we, Goober? Yes, we did. You're a good girl. So now I'm going to introduce her <clears throat> to the pocket halter. And all this is, is basically the same width um, nylon string, I believe it's nylon, um, someone can correct me, but anyhow it's pretty soft, yet very strong. Same thing you'd be using on the end of a handy stick, or whatever you want to call the um, fiberglass stick that's got one of these about 5 feet long on it. This thing's about 12 feet long, so you can get it around their neck. Um, you can lead them with this like you would lead a dog on a leash, or you can loop it over their nose, and then you have um, a quick and easy halter. So, anyhow, prior and proper preparation. I've got to make sure I don't have any knots in this. So, I end up futzing around with this thing, with her watching over my shoulder. So she's kind of getting used to it not looking at her. Hater's are like, quick, put it on me. So I'm just kind of rolling this up. This is going to end up being used as a brush at first. I'm going to work it around, work it around, lay it over her neck, and we'll set it up like a leash, and then we'll just see. And hopefully this will go well. Sometimes she spooks. Most of the time she doesn't. Smell it. Feel it a little bit. Go back to smell it. She's got little whiskers that tickle, huh? Now see? See that left side is pretty shy. Pretty shy, huh? Yeah. I don't know if you can see this, but Taters is saying I want attention too. I'm going to change it up. See, Lauren, the head's good. Let me check it out. Good girl. I'm not going to stay very long on that left side. That's her spooky side. Yes, I know.
forward. Bonk. Wheeling horse out there. That's a minor jettison showing. I'm going to try and introduce this to her now that she's all relaxed. Away there, I was just getting a feeling that she was getting a little concerned. I walk away, wait for her to look towards me. That's a re-invite to engage. See her licking and chewing, so that's good. She's processing a little. Now we're going to reintroduce. And hopefully, we'll just get the rope laid over her neck. One of these days, we're going to get that tangle out. Because I want to give her a hundred percent out if she wants to take it, she can take it. And if she does, she'll run around a little bit, she'll stop, turn and look at me, and I'll invite her back, and we'll start over. And that's okay if it takes a hundred times, it takes a hundred times. It ain't no race. get flies.
big sigh. See, she wants to please. She just got to gain that confidence. We'll give her a minute. Probably had to pee. Yeah. Remember to give your Mustang the hall pass from time to time. That's when you gotta go, you gotta go. We'll see, she may come back in on her own. I'm just gonna put myself in the corner with my back to her and we'll see. She may come back in, or I may have to go back and invite her in. We'll give her a little time. Okay, I'll go invite her. She's watching the world go by. <laughs> 